So I've had a request to do a tutorial on my karaoke creation method and process because there's a couple of unusual things in it. Mainly the tool that I wrote to switch from one program to another part of the way through the process, which some people are really looking forward to seeing. Now I'll go through my whole process start to finish, but I'll put chapters in the video description so that you can skip forward if you want to. I'm going to use a lot of different pieces of software, but I'm not going to talk about how to install them and get them running because everything just kind of worked out of the box for me. I will put links to everything in the video description though. In this tutorial, I'm going to do a Bare Naked Ladies song called Odds Are, which was requested by a coworker and seems like a pretty fun tune, so let's do it. The first thing that you want to do is get a hold of an audio file of the song in the highest possible quality. Uh, if you have the CD, ripping it directly to WAV from the CD is your best option. If not, but at the time of this recording, I'm using free-mp3-download.net, which, despite its name, will give you the option to download a FLAC, a lossless format that should have the same quality as a WAV off the CD. I don't understand how these license-free downloads are legal, so I'm sure they're probably not, which means this site could disappear at any time, but it's here for now. Our next step is to put this FLAC through UVR5 to get rid of the lead vocals. The model I've had the most success with overall is the MDX Net Karaoke, which is often able to leave background vocals behind in the instrumental track, and it gets better at that all the time. Sometimes it's almost uncanny how well it performs, but even if it does strip the backgrounds into the vocal track instead, it still seems to be less likely to remove little traces of things that aren't actually vocals, like synth or string or lead guitar that it otherwise might misinterpret. But if I find that it doesn't remove enough, I'll also do a run of the main, and sometimes I'll mix them together a bit. To save time, you're going to want to use GPU conversion if you have a graphics card that can handle it. I personally run UVR5 on a remote desktop window to my gaming PC, which just makes it my life easier. And I personally like to turn on model test mode as well, which appends the model's name to the end of the generated file name, which is useful in case you want to run multiple models like that. We'll go ahead and run the model now, and it'll do its thing. That'll take a second to run depending on what you're running it on, and then we can move on to the next step, which is an optional step, to throw the results into a DAW to assess them visually and orally. I've been using Reaper for my DAW for like 15 years now. It has all the bells and whistles. Uh, if you're pure freeware, Audacity could likely do the same job, but it's a bit clunky. However you do it, it's nice to eyeball the overall structure this way, see what's been pulled out where, and check it. For example, you can tell at a glance that this bit here looks a bit sus, but upon listening to it, well, I'll show you so you can see what I mean. Um, just solo this bit here. It's not something anyone would ever miss. Same with the one at the end. If my UVR run had pulled the background vocals out with the foreground ones, and they're a pleasing enough component to the song that I want to go through the extensive labor of getting those vocals back in anyway, that's where Melodyne Editor would come in, but it's an expensive piece of software and a complex enough process to justify its own separate tutorial video, so we'll move on from that for now, assuming we don't have to do any work in our DAW or in Melodyne. In this case, the MDX Net karaoke model did a perfect job anyway, leaving the backup harmony vocals in the instrumental track. The next step is to fire up Karaoke Builder Studio. This program has the best approach and tools for synchronizing lyrics to audio, but if you're not already stuck in the CDG ecosystem anyway, the output is pretty ugly. So we're going to use this program to get our timing down, and then transition to another program to render our graphics. But the first thing we need to do is get a hold of the lyrics. I'm just going to go to Google for this, and you'll often find one note of caution here. Google will usually give you a result card like this above any website results. You want to make sure that you compare multiple sets of lyrics because often these are wrong, and conversely, often some of these are wrong. So look at two or three and make sure that they make sense before you commit to one. So I'm going to take those lyrics that we found and I'm going to paste them into the box here. The way this program works, you have to do a couple of things. First of all, you have to make the lyrics fit on the screen, but 
more importantly, this goes by syllables, so you need to split up multiple syllable words with a slash. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all of that, I'm just going to skip forward. Okay, so I've gone through and split everything into lines and screens that fit into the display in this program, and I've added slashes to split up the syllables. I recommend you switch to the split tab, because you can still assess the screen display, but you can also see how things are broken up. In the audio area here, you definitely want to have initially selected the original FLAC, not the outputs from UVR, as it'll make this initial process easier if you can hear the whole song. Once you start the sync process, you have to see it all the way through the end of the song, unfortunately. You can't do it a chunk at a time, which is the major weakness of this program. The best you can do is pause or go back a whole screen, but you can't stop and change something on a screen and then start from that screen again or anywhere but the very beginning and do the whole thing over again. So you want to make sure you get this text right the first time. So I really recommend using the audio controls down here to tap through the whole song in your mind before starting the sync process. As necessary. Also a fun fact that I forgot when first readying this text, only space, new line, and slash split up syllables, dashes, which this song is full of, do not. So don't be fooled by that. Anyway, when you're ready to do a sync, and I'll just pause, this and pause it right away here, you're going to tap the space bar on each new syllable, and the length of the wipe of each syllable ends up being from when you tapped the space bar for it until you tap the spacebar for the next word. You can also hold the spacebar on the last syllable of each line to set its length, which will otherwise get a default length assigned if the next syllable is far enough away. It's very intuitive, but it's very frustrating when you make a mistake and have to start again. And sometimes it's easier to just keep going and fix that bit manually after. Now I like to do the sync process at 75% speed. It takes a little longer, but it's easier, especially if I don't know the song by heart. So I'm just gonna do a bit of this live and then I'll probably cut forward or something. Struck by lightning sounds pretty frightening, but you know the chances are so small. Stuck by beasting, nothing but a beating. Better chance you're gonna buy it at the mall. But it's a 23 or 4. Odds are we gonna be alright. Odds are we gonna be alright for another night. And as soon as you do the last syllable, it'll ask you to save it. No, oh, but which you can't see because it's not part of the ha 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 ha. Okay, so now that you've done the rough sync and you've saved your KBP file, you have access to the timing editor, which will show you graphically every word next to a vertical waveform of the audio, which is pretty great. But if there's one pro tip that I can give you that will make your life easier, it's that at this point, you can change the audio here to the vocal track from UVR. That means that when you open this, instead of looking at the amplitude of the whole song, you're only looking at the amplitude of the vocal parts you're trying to sync words to. It's a major benefit. Here, uh, spacebar plays and pauses, and you can change the speed of playback. Basically, you can drag things around here as necessary, and see the results in the preview down here when you're playing. Sounds pretty frightening, but, uh, but the you most know that important you thing about this screen is the sticky borders checkbox. When this is on and you drag a syllable, the adjacent syllable moves with it. When it's off, they're independent, which is exactly what I need for this scenario here where the word struck is short and doesn't go straight into the word by. There's a rest you can see really clearly on the waveform. So you just uncheck sticky borders and then you can drag that to be as short as it needs to be. How much of which you'll be doing on this screen really depends on how good of a job you did in the sync process. Is if you didn't time stuff quite right, you'll probably be dragging things around with sticky borders to clean it up. Or if you got everything pretty much bullseye, then you'll probably mostly have sticky borders off and be separating syllables with rests like when we just did, or changing the length of the syllables that end a line. Generally, everything has a little bit of both, and at times you will have it in the wrong mode and make a mistake and it happens to all of us. <laughs> when you're satisfied with the timing that you've done here, make sure you save your file, then we'll go over to the other program. YouTube Movie Maker. This software gives you a lot of really great text presentation abilities, much more easily than trying to do it in like a full-fledged NLVE or something. There is a free version, but there are two constraints you'll run into. One, that it's limited to five minutes or less. 
Two, it only goes to 480p. If the whole reason we're using it is because we want nicer graphics, we probably want to be able to go at least 720p, so you're going to need to register this as well. But again, it's quite cheap for the Gold Edition, so that's not too bad. When I started making karaoke, I was using this program for the whole process, including the sync, but its approach to doing sync is much more tedious and it will take you a lot longer than KBS, which is why I wrote a tool in order to start in KBS and move over to YTMM halfway. We do need to get started in YTMM so that we have a file to work with, so when you first fire it up, you'll get this splash screen. I don't really use these other features, so I can't really tell you about them, but we'll go to make videos. Quickly, let's talk about these settings over here. Two things of note. One, what resolution you want to work at. Most of my videos have been at 1080p, which of course looks nice and crisp. This program can be a little slow to render previews though, and that can get frustrating. Moreover, if you're just doing graphics, 720p is probably sufficient. It'll still look far better than anything CDG. It'll take up less physical space in your karaoke file collection, and crucially, it'll make the program a lot faster. So I've done my last few files at 720p. However, uh, having checked, I know this particular song has a music video, and my personal karaoke brand is including the music video whenever possible. Though beware, this makes YouTube much more likely to block your upload, so if you want to contribute to what's on YouTube, you might think twice about doing that, but that's what I do. So yeah, because I'm intending for this to be video, not just graphics, I'm going to go ahead and select 1080p here. The other thing that I will speak to specifically about is format. You might be tempted to pick 265 because it's more advanced, better compression, right? Don't do that because in my experience, H265 crashes Carafun Player 2, which a lot of people use to run their shows. A file encoded in 265 will play out fully, but as soon as it reaches the end, Carafun just closes without any error message and without saving the song queue or history as it only writes those to disk when it exits normally. So don't do this or people who try to use your file will be mad at you. I did reach out to Carafun about that a couple months ago, and they said they'd look into it, but all I really heard back was that a new version's coming out in 2023, so the problem might just go away anyway, so we'll see. Just leave it on MP4 YouTube Facebook, and do whatever you want with the rest of the settings. The first thing that we'll do is go to the plus icon here and add the three audio files we have to the project. The original audio, as well as the instrumental and vocals, and those will show up here. Then we want to go to the Lyric Maker, which you can get to with this button here. And just go straight into full mode. Now, I cannot caution you enough here. For some reason, the Lyric Maker will always remember and still have open the lyrics file that you were last working on. Notice here that last time I used it, I intentionally opened one of the examples that ships with the program, but I've closed YouTube Movie Maker since then, and this is a new project and we've done nothing yet, and Lyric Maker still has this example open. This is supremely irritating, because if you do a bunch of work in here, and then you click save without thinking, instead of doing save as, you've just overwritten the lyrics file of the last thing that you worked on. So you want to get into the habit that the very first thing you do for a new song before you touch anything is go to save as and give it a new file name. There. So now we can safely get rid of all the lines that are in here and we know that we won't have overwritten something that we were working on earlier. So if we come down here, we can select the kind of lyric display that we want. For the purposes of karaoke, you're going to want to pick a karaoke effect show, one line or two lines, which will do the layout and switching for you, or paragraphs, which is a much more powerful mode that I only noticed this week, and it's part of why I'm making this tutorial. For now, we'll just pick two lines. Something else that you'll want to do is change the resolution down here to the same as your project file. When they haven't matched, I've had weird results, but also related to that, you have to decide and set this ahead of time because the font size isn't relative to the resolution, it's absolute pixels. So you need a bigger font to get the same screen height in 1080p than you do in 720p. And as far as I've seen, there's no intuitive display for judging that, like this box isn't frame height or anything. So if you're switching resolutions and need to determine a font size to start with, what you might want to do is just add a single line of text here. That'll render the preview fairly quickly, so then we can just preview it immediately. And we can see how tall it is at 480p. It's pretty enormous. If we change this to 720p, it's the same size, but on a much larger screen. If we change it to 1080p, it's not even going to fit in my recording bounds, but you get the idea. 
Anyway, if we come up here to the text, we can browse and select the text file that I happened to save earlier of the lyrics, and it'll appear in this window. This window is only used for doing a new timing run, though, so it's not that useful for our purposes. In fact, these aren't connected at all. You can make text changes to the actual recorded lines, and you won't see it in this window, so don't be confused by this. Up here is where we set the music. Part of the reason we imported those files into the project earlier is that it makes them quickly pickable here, but if they don't show up, you can just browse to them. I'm gonna pick the original song so I can show you how YTMM's Lyric Maker does timing and why it's better to use KBS. This is a similar hit a key in time kind of experience, but it wants you to hold the key down for the duration of the entire line and then release it at the end of the line. You can probably predict the problem with that. It's not granular enough, so you end up having to adjust each individual line. Let's do a bit of that by pushing the play button here. Hmm. This dialogue is so poorly worded. Press yes to start to record new lyrics match the music, or press no to append the lyrics words to the current lyrics. This just pops up if you have any lines in here already, and it's asking you whether you want to erase them or not. But if you pick no, I'll, okay, actually I'll come back to that because it's easier to show you this problem if you already have some stuff recorded. So let's just click yes. The song starts playing and we can pause it or we could advance it in time. I don't think there's any way to get to do it at a slower speed, but I mean, that really wouldn't help you anyway because we can't get more granular here than the entire line at a time. This actually gets quite difficult because the way we've laid out our lines in order to make the text fit across the screen has put line breaks in words that are alighted together, so there's no proper like musical time to release and repress a key, but yeah. I'll just do a few lines here so you can see. Struck by lightning sounds pretty frightening but you know the chances are so small stuck by beasting nothing but a bee thing better chance you're gonna buy it at the mall but it's a 20 anyway we can stop whenever we want and then we can when we when we restart we can fast forward or rewind as much as we want until we get to the right place but this is why this question here is stupid because we've already recorded the first what eight lines if we click yes it'll wipe those away if we click no, it'll keep them, but it's still going to ask us for them again because the lines on the right and the feet on the left aren't actually connected in any way. And once we're recording, there's no way to skip lines. The way to skip them is to use the pick button that we don't have access to when we're being asked this question. So you have to click no and then stop and then open the pick and uncheck the lines that you don't want to record again and click OK, and then hit play, and click no again. And hope you didn't accidentally click yes either time, just due to how poorly worded the question is and how humans respond to routine confirmation prompts they're already expecting by clicking yes, because they're thinking, yes, this is what I meant to do, and yes, I knew this question was coming. Oops. Especially if you've actually fixed any of these up more granularly than the whole line, this is very frustrating to lose this work. Let's look quickly at how that works. What you want to do is you select a line by clicking, I would say clicking anywhere, but if you click here, then you go into this box and it's a little bit annoying, but if you, you click anywhere else, just so that it's highlighted, and then you go to fine adjustment. Simple mode is pretty much useless, so we'll go to timeline mode. Oh, well, this is pretty familiar. It's kind of like the KBS one, just horizontal instead of vertical. Okay, we can work with that. Advantages and disadvantages. This waveform is ludicrously undetailed for some reason. But we can individually split timing on each letter right from this view, so in that sense it could be more powerful for a single screen. Let's switch our audio to the vocal isolation one like we did with KBS, so that the waveform is a little bit more valuable. Uh, it looks pretty much the same, okay, whatever. In this mode, you can slow it down if you want, right here. For some reason, you can't zoom in or out with the mouse scroll wheel, though. Not with Control or Shift or Alt or anything, you just can't use the scroll wheel. You have to use these buttons. Whatever. So across the top, you have these boxes that you can check to make a timing split. Across the bottom, you have the preview cutoff thing. So first of all, I will check exactly where the onset is by setting the stop button to the end of the first letter. This would be much easier if they had a stop button before the first letter, and same with after the last letter, so let's chalk that up as another annoyance, but listen to this. Struck. Struck. Yeah, it's a bit early, so let's Struck. move it forward. Or a bit late, Struck. rather. Struck. Yeah, and now we feel like it's, that's where it starts. Struck. Bye. 
And now we need to move the buy accordingly. So we'll check that. Looks like it's probably about there. Let's move it a bit past so that we can listen to it. Struck. But yeah. Struck. But struck. Struck. There. So now. Struck. Struck by ends where we lightning want. sounds. We know that struck ends earlier, so let's actually move it back like that. Struck. There. Now struck. we see that it stops. Struck. Before moving on. Now let's put by in the right place. Struck by. Struck Oops. by. Ah. Okay, so you go there. By. That's something that annoys me. If you miss grabbing the handle, you end up dragging the whole thing. And then, oh, well now everything's out of place. So I'll, I'll push control Z. But for some unknown reason, control Z unchecks your preview stop. <laughs> so... You can't, like, you know, there's undo redo support, so you could be like control Z, control Y back and forth to see if a change was, like, which one sounds better. But no, you can't, because the next time it's just gonna go sailing right through your stop. Struck by. Struck by. Struck by. Struck like about by. There. Okay. Struck. So this dotted line represents the, the line after this. And you can tell that we've made our lightning too long. So we'll grab that and move it in, see if we can judge around where it is. This is where it would be great to have a stop button on the back. Lightning sounds Because it goes pretty fast. By lightning exactly sounds where that is, is tricky. Struck. But uh, let's say it's about there. You know what? Let's adjust the end of by a little bit. Oh. That's moving around the end of lightning, too. Well, that's not what we want, because we just put that where we wanted it. Okay, well, maybe if we put a blue post down between the end and the G, that'll act as an anchor, and we'll be moving this blue post between the other two blue posts. Nope! It still moves that other one. Even worse, moving this post not only moves the two posts after it, but it doesn't change the length of the pause that we inserted. It just squishes the word struck and leaves the pause. I don't know why they'd behave it this way. It's completely beyond me. It's like it's missing an equivalent of the sticky borders checkbox, but instead of including one, they tried to pick the behavior that would make the least intuitive sense and be the most frustrating to work with in every possible situation. <sighs> okay, so you're probably starting to understand why people find this a bit frustrating to work with. Yeah, at least, you wouldn't have to do so much fine adjustment if it did, like, tap per syllable, like KBS or even tap per word would be better, but hold per line guarantees you have to fine adjust every line of the song, and fine adjusting sucks. So, how do we break out of this? Let's just close all of the Lyric Maker stuff, We're saving our file on the way, because we need to have at least something there, but we'll get rid of all this, and we'll go over to the tool that I wrote. Okay, so here we are at my KBP to RZLRC timing converter. A snappy and rememberable name with a snappy and rememberable URL, kbptorzlrc.azurewebsites.net. Sorry, it's not better. I'm too lazy to fix it. So what we want to do now that we have a KBP file and we have an RZLRC file, we're going to open up the KBP file in our favorite text editor, Control A and Control C. Go over to the tool, paste that in here. We have some options here. I needed to transform the lyrics to all uppercase once, just for font reasons, so you can do that if you want. It's really not something I expect anyone to use. This stuff though, this is probably to do with having multiple layers of lyrics and stuff, or using the 3D layout stuff. I don't know anything about it. All of my files have always had these attributes. If you ever need to set them, you can set them. You probably shouldn't worry about them. We're just going to click Convert. And what we get is a bunch of markup, and we're going to select all of the items, and Control c that, and then we're going to go to our RZLRC file we have now, and we're going to replace all of these with what we just copied. And we're going to do a save. And it's as simple as that. Switch back to YTMM and open that RZLRC file back up. 
And voila! All of the lines of lyrics are timed out for us. Let's change to the full song audio and select uh, karaoke 2 line and 720p just to check out the timing that we have now. Uh, you'll notice that even at 720p, the preview can take a long time to render once you have a whole song of timed lines. But once the preview is playing, you can click on a line in the list to jump to it. Struck by Let's use it with multiple monitors, obviously. But you know the chances are so small. Stuck by beasting, nothing but a bee thing. Better chance you're gonna buy it at the mall. But it's a 23 or 4 to 1 that you can fall in love by the end of this song. So get up, get up, tell the book. All right, timing looked pretty good. There's a few spots to clean up, largely because I didn't give it much of a once-over in KBS before I did the export, but it's mostly pauses and endings, which are both pretty painless to fix in YTMM, so I'll go through and do that now. One thing you may want to clean up that is a little bit of a problem with YTMM is onsets after pauses especially, because it's not a font that's designed for karaoke necessarily. You can pick any font you want, the variable width and everything, but mostly it's because it times things out without considering that you kind of need to have like an introduction to the fact that the song is going on a little bit earlier than just the width of each character across that word so what I sometimes like to do like if you look at this it feels like by is late struck by lightning sounds pretty so what I like to do to fix that is to move the first character much shorter and unfortunately that lack of locking posts thing does come up and you have to manually put them back but struck by lightning that's sounds much easier to sing We'll probably end up doing a fair amount of that, but it's not too bad because everything else is timed out accurately for you. Here's a good example. Uh, he holds on to the word play for a really long time in the bridge, but the letter P is so wide and the letter L so narrow that you don't even see long, the so onset. Why not play? Like it doesn't look like it even starts, so we have to move that forward. Even with the fact that there's a question mark there padding out the width of this word as a whole, it's still a problem. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, now you can see that the word actually started. So you do have to end up doing a lot of that. There is an alternative way to do this that is often easier and just a little bit sneaky. You'll notice that the timing of each line is determined by the start and end, but the timing within each line is actually encoded into the text. And even when you are fine adjusting a line, it's showing you now what the timing is going to be. So say we want to do to this struck by lightning what we did to the first struck by lightning, we can move this back and see about where we want that B to be and just read it off here 112.10 and the fact that it changed these numbers is really annoying but we can just control Z that and exit and make that change directly to the text and then it is where we wanted it without moving the other posts Struck. So at this point, I want to show you how you can get full control out of your layout using paragraphs mode. But first we need to know what we want it to look like. So I guess now is the right time to go and grab that music video that I mentioned. If you need to grab anything off of YouTube, the program that made my life much easier is called JDownloader2. When it's open, it's watching the clipboard for URLs. So all you need to do is just find the YouTube link and copy it to clipboard and it'll immediately show up in this link grabber. You can select a variant if you want and it just works. So let's import that into YTMM and we're going to drag it onto the video track here. By default, it puts the video and audio on the same track, and we don't want to hear the audio from the video, so we're just going to go ahead and mute that on that track. But 
We do need to see the video's audio because that's the best way to line it up with the audio we're actually using in order to make sure the video is lined up as intended. So the way to do that is to drag the video again onto an audio track and line those up. We still can't see it until we right click and say create waveform data. Now there's a visual to it. Now we can drag on the instrumental that we want and we can try and visually line those up. And it looks like they're almost exactly in line already anyway. We can listen to it in order to, to get a sense of Not a lot of slapback, it's probably pretty okay. Maybe a little bit. But yeah, that's how we'll line that up. The lyrics are timed to this, so we drag the lyrics onto the text track and snap that to it. Then that should all be lined up. Now, I know that some of you like to compensate for human reaction time and thereby intentionally offset the entire lyrics animation a little earlier than the music and video. For some reason, YTMM made that a bit weird, because you can't just drag video sideways and leave an empty spot on the track. You have to right click and say, insert gap. There it is. And then you can set the duration of that gap by dragging it, or more likely uh, you want to do it manually. Because you probably only want like maybe 50, maybe 100 milliseconds. And that's how that works. It occurs to me at this point we should probably save our work. Because all we've saved is the lyrics file, not any of that composition stuff that we just did. So let's save the project. Now, at this point, we could push the play button and we would see it in the preview window, but most of what we want to mess with right now is in the lyric editor, and we can't change any of that stuff from out here, so how do we see what it looks like as we do it? One thing you can do is go into the lyric editor, go to this little swatch over here, which is the background, and you can select fill with video, and select that video. It won't be offset like you might have it in your timeline in the main window, but it'll be more than close enough to get a sense of what we're doing. You would also do this if you were using a background of album art, like I often do for songs that don't have music videos. So now when we play... And it does take a while. Now we actually see the music video. Struck! By light. So we can see but that this is a terrible font and terrible set of colors. This is actually an interesting music video to use as an example because it's covered in text and part of the interesting thing about the video is reading the weird pieces of news text that are scrolling. So if we want to do the music video justice, we don't necessarily want to cover that up. So what are we going to do? Where are we going to put our lyrics? The truth is, I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to put the words yet, but for the purposes of this tutorial, wanted to show you how paragraphs work. So we're going to put it in paragraphs mode now anyway. So the easiest way to create paragraphs, in my opinion, is to right click on each line you want to be the first line of a paragraph and say mark as paragraph. It turns blue and the entry shows up in the paragraphs box on the right. The Paragraphs box has its own mode selector, with some similar choices to the one in which we picked Paragraphs mode, and some differences. Which one you pick and how many paragraphs you want accordingly are intimately connected, so let's just start by creating some natural-seeming paragraphs every now and then. You can make as many or as few lines as you want, you just have to fit them on the screen at the time that you want. While we're at it, let's set the font to like... 90 point Gotham black, and we'll make it bold and italic. We'll play with colors later, but let's say align top center. So now that we've created a few paragraphs... Yeah, okay, so we can read that. An interesting thing that you can do, though, with paragraphs, is you can give each one a separate layout by just checking this and 
this stupid paragraph customized layout thing you can't actually resize you can only maximize so now you can't see the rest of the controls but the point is you can drag the lines around to arrange them in a custom way if you had some reason to do that that might be for you know, including graphics or who knows what but that is a capability that you have you can also even change the font for a specific line like this one is no longer italicized just because and that triggers a uh, font distinguisher here i just want to quickly detail the different modes of paragraph Karaoke Effect and Karaoke Effect EX are very similar. The difference is that the EX version clears lines after they've been sung, while the regular version leaves them up until the whole paragraph changes. The other interesting one, however, is Scroll Karaoke, which vertically scrolls your lines within your paragraph. This comes with its own sub-selection of three different styles. Scroll Style 1 keeps the current line in the center of the height of the paragraph and scrolls the paragraph text around that center point, but only scrolls one line at a time, just as a line finishes, so the current line stays locked in place. Style 2 is similar starting in the center, but is a continuous smooth scrolling, not a locked in place one. Style 3 is a continuous smooth scroll as well, but rather than starting and ending at or near the center of the paragraph, it starts from the bottom and ends at the top, meaning it scrolls all the way into and all the way out of view. You can combine these with this limit area checkbox, which becomes the center point of the paragraph and keeps it from scrolling outside of these bounds. This doesn't limit your horizontal the way you'd think it might, though, because the width of the paragraph can't be any smaller than the width of the line. Uh, that's hard to explain, but maybe play with it a bit and you'll understand what I mean. So what I've ended up deciding to do with this song is use the scrolling feature to make kind of like a teleprompter effect that will match the existing tickers and fit the newscast theme. So I opened up the video in VLC and used the take snapshot feature to pull a few frames and took those into paint.net and I used them as a guide to create a translucent background image that I can use as an overlay to make the text readable without completely obscuring the background if the audience wants to watch the video instead of the singer or the lyrics. Then I exported this layer as a ping and in the Lyric Maker, I set that as the background image of the video. Then I used the Limit Area feature very carefully to get the scroll to fit just where I want it. That took a little bit of trial and error, but... You'll also notice that in the entire song, I'm only using four very long paragraphs, and I'm doing that so that I get the scrolling effect through the entire thing, because if you're using scroll, especially if you're limiting area, then it doesn't matter as much how long your paragraph is. You don't want to set it to the whole song because performance does start to degrade, and also it feels kind of natural to have little breaks in it, but you know the first 24 lines are in the first paragraph. Now, I could have checked the Include Background box to have Lyric Maker handle this as part of the lyrics and not have to do the overlay myself, but I want that overlay not to appear through the whole length of the lyric file. I want it to appear just before the lyrics appear and stop just after the lyrics stop and fade in and fade out. So to do that, I've imported the image and dragged it on as an overlay layer. I've also added motion effect so that it will kind of expand outwards and it'll fade at its end. Now, the one problem that I am experiencing with this method is that for some reason, the preview is all messed up here. It appears to have the all of the lyrics squashed in, or at least all of one paragraph squashed in here. You can see it highlighting, but that's not how it's actually going to appear. So what I needed to do in order to see that this was actually working properly the way I wanted it is to use this preview feature, which you, it, it's pretty much the same, but it actually renders it properly, except you can't navigate around in it once it's started. But you can see here that it is actually working correctly. So I'm not sure why there's an issue. 
that's a new problem because I've never used the scrolling before. Maybe it's a problem endemic to the scrolling. I don't know. You might also notice, and it's just my particular brand, but I've tried to select specific colors that match. Um, you can see that that blue of Unsung is the same blue as the bottom ticker, and the red is the same as from the logo and the background here. I think that's important just to kind of try to match things. If I'm doing a music video, I'll always take colors from the music video. Uh, if I'm doing album art, then I'll try to take colors from the album art. It's nice to just try to try and be themed. You can try and be themed with your fonts as well, but sometimes I've erred on the, a lack of readability, so be careful with that because that can be really annoying. I should actually show you where those font colors are because it's not necessarily very intuitive. The color for the unsung stuff is in the font dialog and uh, you know you can pick various different kinds of things that give you different color options. I'm just using the basic outline one but you can also have one that has a glow of a different color or a shining I guess it's called. You can have one without the outline and a shining just an outline, you know, etc, etc. The sung lyric effect, those colors are these swatches down here, which those are all going to be shown whether or not they apply to the letter style that you have selected, and uh, you can't have a different selected letter style for the unsung and the sung stuff. So it, these swatches are just obsolete and not being used. Only, only the, the front two are being used, the font and the outline for what I have selected because I'm not using shine and I don't have a shadow or a shade called over here for no reason. So yeah, the way of handling this palette can be very confusing. So at this point, this video is mostly done. There's just a couple of finishing touches that I like to put on. Um, let's expand this for more text tracks and you can just double click to insert some text. So I like when I'm doing a music video to have the title visible all of the time across the top. There's no need for that, it's just something I specifically like. If you consume my videos and you don't like that, I'm sorry. But we can put that sort of all the way across. You, you can adjust its placement whenever that's highlighted. I'll also put my karaoke creation name just to appear briefly at the beginning and the end. And lately I've been enjoying messing around with just making my logo appear in silly ways as an overlay. I do have a specific way that I like to make instrumental break progress bars, but that doesn't apply to this song. So I'll do a separate tutorial about that. So that about wraps things up. All that's left is to export your video file out of YTMM and upload it to your karaoke Google Drive and to YouTube. As far as YouTube is concerned, you would definitely get told that your video contains copyrighted protected content, but nine times out of 10, if you're doing just music, it'll also say that the owner allows this content to be used on YouTube. It'll automatically add a music metadata section to your video description and the original artist will get credit for it, which is great. However, about 20% of the time, if you're including the music video and every now and then, even if you're only doing music, they'll get blocked instead. And this is just a difference in how different rights holders respond to use of their material. You'll never be able to monetize your karaoke videos yourself either way, as it's actually the music rights holders who receive that option instead. Uh, but most of the time, the videos at least stay up for the world to be able to access, which is our goal as hobbyists anyway. Rarely, you can get actual copyright strikes, and I don't know too much about that happening, but if it's something that you're worried about, you can always talk to the community about it and maybe get some advice there. <coughs> don't do any fool thoughts. <coughs> so I hope this video helps you make your own videos if you're just starting out, or if you're an established karaoke creator, I hope you found something in my approach that's useful to you. Let me know in the comments if I've made any mistakes or if you have some wisdom to add. There are a couple of tutorials that I didn't cover that might be useful for me to make at some point using Melodyne to try and recover lost background vocals, for example. If those are things that you want to see, um, make sure to nag me about that. Happy singing, everybody!